Alright, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Now this is gonna be another tutorial video because um if you guys didn't know, um some of you guys probably don't know, but way back in my channel when I did my old videos, I had a tutorial on how to make free and easily make and easily make custom thumbnails for your YouTube channel. Now um Paint on Net got an update and they're just I just got a lot better at making thumbnails, so I want you guys to I wanna help some of you guys out by giving you a tutorial on how to make amazing looking thumbnails thumbnails that can look as good or and sometimes better than photoshop thumbnails of course photoshop is a lot more tools so of course photoshop will be most of the time better thumbnails but this is for free and makes professional professional looking thumbnails if you like my thumbnails that i make on my videos you can check my thumbnails from the past year or so you can see that you can make them all for free all my thumbnails are made i think 95 percent percent of them the custom ones, or 90, I can say 98% of them made with amazing free um, Photoshop graphics imaging making program called Paint.net. Now, Paint.net is not just a YouTube thumbnail making. I make program. I make it for banners, for graphic design, um, for printing out really cool art um, on the computer or something like that. It's basically like a free Photoshop, but it has really great tools and other plugins that you can download for yourself, too. Now, some of these plugins, I... Um, on paint.net are downloadable like for one i'll be using the drop down the drop shadows basically i think it's the only one that is uh that is a downloadable but you can easily search it by going to paint.net drop shadow or object drop shadow plugin uh and i won't google it for you because there are other alternatives to having a drop shadow and i'll show you later there so how to easily make thumbnails uh with paint.net for free all of this is for free First, you want to get download the paint on it. I'll have the link in the description. But if I, if I forget or it's not there or you're too lazy, just go to www.pdn.com slash download slash pdn.html. Um, and you'll see free download now, paint.net 4.0.3. Now, by the way, it is 2014, July 26, 2014. So this is pretty updated right there. Download it right there. And this is the requirements, you can check it right there. So, next link I want you to go to is you want to go to this amazing website called thefont.com. www.dafont.com. It's a really, really amazing font download, download website where you can download a lot of amazing, cool fonts. Um, there are other ones like there are other ones like 1001fonts.com, but I, li I like, certainly like this one because they're high quality and they're all free to use. So what I like going to is I like going to uh, cartoon and looking at really cool fonts like that. I have Grow Bold. I think I've animated. I also have really cool fonts like other ones here. These are really good for thumbnails because they pop out and they're really the, the YouTube user really likes to look at these fonts. So once you've downloaded a font or a couple fonts because you might want to have a variety of fonts on your thumbnail then you are done you, if you if you want to know how to download fonts there are a lot of tutorials out there on youtube but it's pretty easy you just click download you double click on the zip or dot ttf file or or dot true type font um file that it gives you and then you click install and it's pretty easy to download fonts you can if you don't know how you can search up a tutorial on youtube next what you want to do is probably the final thing you might want to um, have is have a really good background for your thumbnail. Now, this will depend for any video, okay? But for a tutorial like this on how to make thumbnails, I use a crumpled paper texture because these are really cool looking for thumbnails, and it it, it kind of related to the, to the the video itself because it's how to make a thumbnail that has art and it's paper. You know, you, you guys can connect the dots, but um, I I, I use this only once in my videos, and I think the crumpled paper texture looks really good actually. So, uh, now once you have a cool background, if you're having a gaming background, let's say, um, I don't know, a, a mini game on Mindplex or something, you might want to have a background, uh, like a screenshot of the game itself as the background and then have your text over it and your images and stuff. That's what I basically, I basically do. You don't want a thumbnail that's like one layer and everything is bad and stuff like that. You want it to be, you have want to have depth to your thumbnail and I'll teach you how to do that later. You want to have a good background. I use this crumpled paper texture. You can just copy it. And it's pretty easy to paste it into your page on net. Well, so once you have your text, your background that you want to use, your text that you want to use, your font, or uh, and if you have paint.net, which is a free download, you can open up paint.net. I have it right here. It's actually pinned to my taskbar. And this will um this is what it will show you when you first open it. It may be a little confusing, but don't worry. This is a lot less confusing than Photoshop. Free and totally professional. 
you, you, you don't really, you don't have really have to worry about too much of these stuff. This is just depending on the tool. They change depending on the tool you use. So, um, yeah. Basically, what you want to do is you don't want to have a thumbnail that basically 800 by 600. You want to have a 720p or 1080p th thumbnail. As you can see, the, the dimensions are at the bottom. It says 800 by 600. You want that to say 1280 by 720 or 1920 by 1080, depending on the quality you want for your thumbnails. Thumbnails will be reduced down to a size about... I would say here or maybe even here and they're gonna be really tiny so I don't think you really need 1080p because it will make a bigger file size and it just you know it, it's better quality but it won't really show when it's so small so what you want to do is first you want to have go to image canvas size right here control shift R change the width to 1280 because it's gonna be a 720p thumbnail it looks really professional and really small file size by 720 so it's say 1280 by 720. Keep the resolution at 96 because that is a pretty good resolution for the file size. And by the way, keep in mind that YouTube thumbnails are a maximum of two megabytes only. If you go like exceed the megabyte when you're done your thumbnail, you might want to change the fi the file type from like a, if it's a JPEG, change it to something else or something. Or you can bring down this resolution. Or yeah. So hit OK. And as you can see, we have our perfect size thumbnail. So what I like to do as a as a habit and as a really good um, tri tip that you guys should do every time making thumbnail is you want to have a transparent background because you don't really want to have white as your background because um, as you can tell if you put it's just not really good because you might want to have a uh, you don't want to have because the white background is basically another layer that is already there by default. So as you can see, if I try to delete this line, it'll delete the white background and the little checkered board that you can see. That's what me that makes it transparent so that nothing is behind it. So you want to delete the whole white background by doing Control A on your keyboard, or getting the go in the tool tool window. Want to hit, hit rectangle select or S on your keyboard. S drag left click, drag your mouse, select the whole white thumbnail, hit delete on your keyboard, and bam, it's all transparent. So the checkered board, the little checkered texture, makes it transparent. That means it's gonna be clear. <laughs> you guys probably know what that means. So. Now it, we have the bottom layer. It's named background. You want to paste your um, little background here, so you can copy that. Um, and you need to use a keyboard for this. You can't right-click and paste. You need to do Control, hold Control on your keyboard and a V at the same time, and boom, you have your background. Now make sure you have a free background, like a uh, copyright-free, and you're free to use. That's, uh, Google Images, basically one of your best friends when it comes to images, but. If you really want to look professional, you might want to go to a specialized um, free image ba slash background website like um, what you call Shutterstock. And if it's not, you, I think you have to pay for Shutterstock. But I can maybe Google Images. I think uh, a lot of people use, and I, don't, I, I haven't gotten in trouble yet. So you wanna make a new layer by going to Add New Layer here, or I think it's Control M. I actually don't know. But as you can see, the background looks pretty good. If you want to make the background look more professional, I sometimes blur the background to make the text pop up a bit more, but only a little bit. You go to, um, this is an effect. I, as you can see, I have so many effects. When you first open it, you're probably like, gonna, you're probably going to have from this to here of effect. You're, you're like, you won't have this many effects. I just downloaded a huge effect pack that you don't really need all of this stuff. Look at that. You don't need all of this stuff. Um, so what you want to do is go to effects. Blurs, you will have blur. It's not a downloadable one. Blurs and uh, where it says Gaussian blur, G, uh, right there. Not Gaussian blur plus. That's something you need to download. This is Gaussian blur. Just hit Gaussian blur. Now put the radius up to about 15. Or if you if you have like a pretty um, plain background, you might want you don't want to blur too much. So I recommend eight or something like that. So it's slightly blurred. And yeah, I can see the paper is not completely white. So if you want to fix that. You can go to adjustments, hue slash saturation, which is um, you not downloadable again. Bring up the saturation a bit, or bring it down to make it a little bit more white, or bring up the lightness, bring it down, change the hue of it to whatever you guys want. You can mess with the background you want. I like it when it's pure white, not like a little yellowish like that. So that's what I like my background to be. So once you have your background finished, you can add, you can finally start to add your text. Now, uh, I like to keep my, if my background is white, I want to make my text black first and then change the effect later. So I have a cool font that I have. It's called Cartoonist. I like that font. I downloaded it from Defont.com. So yeah, get a good font from Defont.com or any font website.
So, once you have your background done, get your font and make it pretty big. You don't have to bold this one, or you can bold if you want. Just make it whatever you want. I want to make um, tutorial. That's what I'm going to put at the top, and then under I'm going to do make custom thumbnails. So, you can make this bigger by, of course, making that bigger. You want to fit, for me, if I want to make a tutorial, I want it to be the biggest thing, because... Um, so that they know it's a tutorial. No, duh. <laughs> so, that's pretty good for me. Under, I'm going to have how to make make custom thumbnails. Right? So, there we have tutorial. You can add a, like that if you want. Um, I'm not going to do that because uh, I don't know why. I just like it when it's simple and great. As you can tell, that doesn't look pretty good at all. So, um, I recommend if you're doing, like, tutorial and then under it, make custom thumbnails in a different size, you want to have a new layer. So, I, I told you, you don't want to have everything on one layer because then you can't separately edit them. Because as you can see, if you click this little, ch where's my mouse? Okay, if you click this little checkbox right there in background, then it will hide the layer. And as you can see, the tutorial is on a totally separate layer with, with another transparent background. So, let's say if I select, oops, let me bring that back. If I select the whole thing on the the text layer and I hit delete it, will, it won't delete the background because it's on a separate layer let me just undo that because I want that back so separate layers to so useful it's a no-brainer when you're making thumbnails so I want to go to if you want to add a cool effect to that change the color um you can you can change the color first hand as you can see I left it at black but when you're making your text you can change the color to whatever you want but if you let's say forget <laughs> that to change your color then you can um, go to your bucket tool, which is right here, paint bucket or F on your shortcut. Change your color here. Let's say I like red, a uh, nice red. And then you just hold shift because if you don't hold shift, it will only do one little color at a time. And that's if you have a lot of uh, letters, that's going to be tedious. So you want to hold shift. If you hold shift, it will change the type, the selection type to global so that it, it will select every black thing or every blue or whatever color you clicked on so so once you have your change color as you can see, it looks okay but i want to add some another effect to make it look good um i actually if you're um a gradient tool is actually really useful if you're making if you want to make cool looking text and look good for thumbnails so i you hold shift and select if you hold shift and click on one thing of course as i said before it'll select the whole text you want to click on the gradient tool you want to pick two colors. Your primary color will be in the mid. I like, and as you can see, if you have a, a linear gradient too. If I hold, if I just drag and drag it, like you have one little dot and drag it up or something, it'll make a nice gradient looking text right there. So if you want, and you can change it to whatever color you want. You can make it blue, blue to white, orange to white, or you can even change the secondary color to make it orange to blue or something, which doesn't look too good actually. But yeah, so let me just delete all that stuff all right so but the best gradient i think in my opinion is if you go to this is the uh linear gradient tool this is the linear reflected gradient tool which is have the color in the middle we also have the diamond which looks i don't really like the look of that actually but um and but the best thing in my opinion is is the uh radial tool because look um uh you'll see how it looks once I'm done with it. So as you can see, it looks pretty weird like that. But if you have the middle color, like the middle, the primary color, which is the top left one here, as a light color, like orange, and the secondary color as a dark, like red, it looks really cool. Let me just make that lighter. Uh, it makes a really cool text effect so that, and a lot of YouTubers do this on their thumbnails. Bam, look at that. The middle is like an orange and the edges are gradient so that they're darker red i like the look of it you guys can change whatever look of your text you want this is totally up to you because it's totally customizable thumbnail what uh, what other another thing i like to do is i go to effects um object drop shadow and i don't think you will have this so you want to go to paint.net and go to paint.net um object oops ob object drop shadow plugin or search that something about that to youtube and this is the one i think this is the one i used the vander martin right here and you can search it up and download it and you can look up a tutorial on that i won't uh, um i won't do a tutorial on how to make uh, how to download effects uh, just how to make your thumbnail so i go to effects let's see 
object drop shadow and I add a black drop shadow if you bring up the widening radius and the blur radius then you can make a cool and then it'll be oops sorry back if you hit ok look it totally popping up in in the background it looks really good than how it looked before so um, I actually like to add an outline to my text because I just I look I like the look of it better so if you go to effects back to object drop shadow you you inst put the blur radius all the way down so it's just not blurred at all maybe bring down your writing to eight and then it has a little black outline which looks pretty cool actually in my opinion uh, you can leave it at that if you want but I like to add another drop shadow but if, since you don't have drop shadow another alternative is you go to photo glow and if you if you add like the look of that it looks pretty cool right if you hit OK, it looks it glows the text a bit, so it looks pretty good. But you don't have to do that if you want. If you go to Photo and Glow, if you bring the radius all the way up, bring the brightness down, and bring the contrast all the way up, it'll add a little drop mini drop shadow itself. Look, I added a little drop shadow, not as big as a drop shadow, but it, it's pretty good. This is what I used before on my old thumbnail. So as you can see, we spent so much time just working on one little thing, but in my opinion. I, I can do this pretty quickly. Once you you can you can you only have to watch the tutorial once to be able to do the effects that I do. What I like to do is have to go to the eclipse select, which is S. I highlight a little semicircle above the text, and I you guys know what the effect looks like. If you see this little Merlin's action button right here, adds a little white semicircle eclipse on the button on the top. You can add that to your text by doing the clip select and selecting the top of the text oh, selecting the top of the text there and then you can change if oops you can change if you want and if you go on the on the you have to, if you have to make a new layer and then do the clip select and then you can move the uh, clip select like that you can rotate it to make it just do whatever you want with it and then once you've done that you have to copy that control or you got to go to the, the layer that your text on copy that but in control c Paste it on a layer above it. So if you take away layer, look, you only pasted the the top part of the text that you want to lighten. So you want to go to the the cutout. You want to select the layer that's cut out, right? You want to go to adjustments, hue slash saturation, oh, reset everything, and bring up the lightness to about I would say 25 or so, or let me see, 30. That looks pretty good. So when you zoom it out, it looks pretty cool. It looks like it has a little like light reflection on it. I don't know. I just like the look of it. You guys don't have to do it. You guys can do it if you want. As I said before, this is totally up to you. But you, you might want you might not want to do it after you already do the drop shadow because look, it kind of messed up there because the drop shadow is lightened too. But if you zoom out, it doesn't really make a difference. Select the top layer and click this little merge layer down, and then it'll merge the two layers so that it's on one separate layer, as you can see right there. So again, make a new layer and make your new text. I'm gonna kind of zo zip through this because you guys already know what I like to do in my thumbnails. I'm gonna keep. I want to do a different font into another font I like. It's called Dimbo right here. D I M B O. Again, I got all these fonts from Defont.com. So make make. Oh my gosh, make custom. And uh, I'm gonna put that on the bottom. I'm gonna center the text because it just looks cool. Make custom thumbnails there we go okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna put the thumbnails on a separate layer and make it bigger so that it looks a lot professional so make custom so that's on one layer and then I'm gonna make a new layer and then make the thumbnails word a lot bigger so thumbnails so just center it's centered so as you can see that looks pretty good. Make custom thumbnails. That looks really cool. I really like this font. You can. It's called Dimbo. I really like the font, and it's really really cool. So now, if you want, you can merge the, the two the the thumbnails and the make custom two layers. They're on separate layers. You can merge them into one layer. That's what I like to do. So it's a lot easier for me. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna change the thing. I'm gonna change the color to red. I think that's pretty good. Let me see. Does that look good with the tutorial? Yeah, it looks pretty good. So um, again, you have to hold shift to select the whole thing. Uh, I'm gonna do a little gradient. So let me just select the whole thing. All right, and make it from same thing. Make custom thumbnails. That look okay? That looks pretty good for me. You guys can change it up if you want. But yeah, I think that looks pretty good for me. So I'm gonna add another drop shadow by own effects object drop shadow 
Uh, I'm not gonna make an outline on this. Actually, I will make an outline, but make it smaller. Make custom thumbnails. So, I'm gonna leave that like that. I'm not gonna add a little... I'm not gonna glow that or anything. I'm just gonna leave it like that, but I'm gonna add a drop shadow because... I add 99% of my text I add a drop shadow to. It just looks pretty professional for me. There you go. So, you already have, um, I think, 80% of your thumbnail done now this is really simple as you can see i left some space on the bottom purposely because i want to add the little paint.net image to my actual thumbnail but we don't have we don't have that much space so let's actually select my tutorial and bring that down a bit oops I, pr I go to the select tool which is the top right corner of the tool window bring it down a bit or actually no let me just hold shift and if you hold shift as you can see if we resize it, it'll, it, we can distort it. But if you hold shift, it'll keep the, the aspect ratio of it. So I'm going to make it like that. Bring it to the top. And then unselect that by clicking deselect. Select the make custom thumbnails one. Select that. Make it a bit smaller. Right there. And then resize it so that it's perfectly fine. So now we have a lot more space for another paint.net image we want to go to i'm just going to go on google images and do search paint.net pretty easy oops cap lock this is the best one for my opinion and let me see there are, this is a really good one you can make your own if you want just download the logo and i paint on that but i'm going to copy this image all right and if i go in the new layer and one if, if this this window pops up because usually if you're if you're pasting an image that's bigger than your canvas size if you paste an image that's bigger than 1280 by 720 you want to click keep canvas size because you don't want to expand the the 1280 by 720 make it totally different so let's get this again i hold shift to just keep the aspect ratio i think that, that's a pretty good size right there so let me just bring it up just a tiny bit so that i can add some emphasis to that and deselect so what i want to do it you want to get rid of that little white because it looks really unprofessional and it doesn't really go good with the background so you want to go to this ma magic wand which is s all right click s why won't you click s okay s is another one too go to the magic wand all right and you want all you want to do is click on the white part and then it will select only the white part and a little bit of these ones too so if you click the white part and delete there we go. We've deleted the white part successfully, which is really good. And if you want, as you can see, there's some white parts in between a P and A and E. You can hold shift, but as you can see, it's selecting some of this white part on the cloud. So you can just um, select the white part only. Keep your tolerance at 50 and your flood mode at con contiguous, whatever. Hold control and then select the P. It'll add that to the selection. It won't replace it. As you can see, just hold that. Hold control, select the the P, A, and E. Hit the linear keyboard, and bam, we have this perfectly perfectly good. So I'm going to add another effect to it by going to Object Drop Shadow. La la, there we go. It looks really bad like that, so just bring down... Or you want, you can add an outline to it. Make Add a white outline, which I like to do with some images. You don't have to do that for your images. I, I, it looks better, in my opinion. Let's add another drop shadow. Not too big. Just don't blur too much. Let's see. Paint.net. That doesn't look really good. So, again, this is... Um, I messed up here, and you you might mess up too. So, this is just a basic trial and error. I'm just going to add a, a photo glow to it to make it less. There we go. If you want, you can do that. Let me see. I like the look of that, in my opinion. I think it looks pretty good. So, there you go. You are done. So, this is the finished finished um product right here so if you like the thumbnail you want and if you're finished with it you can make some action little tweaks to it i think it looks pretty good in my opinion check if you have any spelling errors make custom thumbnail no i don't have any spelling errors you have your image and my tip on making a really good thumbnail is to not just add text and a background you want to add some images to it so that's what i do in most of my thumbnails but for me the background is good of an image enough or add the minecraft logo on the top or the battlefield logo or whatever you want i make gaming videos if you can look on at my thumbnails and you i don't want you to copy them i want you to base my if you want if you like my thumbnails you can base your your thumbnails on mine but make it customized to your own liking so i like the way this looks all right you can add an image too you go to file 
save as not save because that'll save it as a pdn and if you want to keep on continuing to work on this like if you're making a series you want to change the episode one to episode two and episode three but you want to have the same background you want to save it as a dot pdn and then make it like let's see series work in progress something and then it will if you hit save there as you can see if i click series work in progress if i double tap that it will open Oops, let me just close one of them. It will open the actual project itself. It won't open a file image. So if you if you want to um, make it compatible for YouTube thumbnails, you want to save it as a, what do you call it? A PNG or JPEG. If you want, uh, if, cause if you have any transparency, like, let me show you an example. If you have any transparent things in your image and you want to keep it transparent, you want to save it as a PNG because PNG saves transparency. But JPEG does not, but it makes the file size so much smaller. I like PNG because, I don't know, I just like the... I've been used to clicking PNG for a while. And it, I like the quality, and it's not too big. It can get a little big, but, you know, if, if it gets over 2 megabytes, change it to JPEG, right? Change it to JPEG. But uh, for my sake, for you guys' sake, I'm just going to save it as a PNG. So that once you save it as JPEG, it will be a smaller file size. So, let's see. Uh, make thumbnails tutorial you can ch you can name it whatever you want uh, I'm gonna do 2014 because I already have another tutorial thumbnail thumbnail in my YouTube extras folder and PNG hit save and it'll as you can see it, it's only 784.1 kilobytes which is a tiny 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 it's way under 24 megabytes because the KB is smaller than MB and uh, if you click the bit depth I just you can click 32 bit it'll make it bigger and, but it'll make the quality a bit better. So, But I just click auto detect because it's smaller file size and it doesn't look that much different. So once you're done that, you just hit OK. And then it'll ask you to flatten. And basically, as you can see, we have four layers here. It will flatten it into one layer because you can't have an image with four layers in the file size. So you just click flatten. Flatten into one layer. And then this is the bit. And then don't worry, you can exit out of this because you've already saved it if you want. And as you can see, if we go, if you search for it, there we go. Look at that, guys. If you go double click on the dot, make thumbnails tutorial 2014.png or whatever you name that. As we can, you can use, I use photo gallery to look at my images, but bam. You have finished your YouTube thumbnail. Once you know how to do it, it takes literally 5 to 10 minutes to do it on every single one of your videos. You don't have to add that many effects if you want. You can make a simple, but I, I want, as you can see, we can see all my thumbnails here. I want you guys, these are not really too good, but... Um, I want you guys to know this little tip. Make your thumbnails, don't, make, make sure it doesn't have too much text. Because then they won't be able to read it and they'll be like, um, you want to have your thumbnail to be short and sweet. Like, the text in your thumbnail to be short and sweet. Like, my full, t my full title in this video is how to make custom thumbnails 2014 free, blah, blah. You want, you don't want to have all of that on your thumbnail because you don't have that much space and it'll be pretty small. So, as you can tell, I did... I just did making custom thumbnails and tutorial and they'll the, once they read the title and the and the thumbnail because the title and the thumbnail needs to go together really well so if you have a short and sweet thumbnail which is pretty good I, I like the look of that you want to make the thumbnail is the first thing that people will see on your video they want to be you want to be able to for them to click it so that they can see your video and then you can promote your channel so guys if this if this tutorial helped you a lot Please leave a like and please comment, maybe even subscribe because I have a lot more tutorials coming out for you guys. A lot more gameplay commentary. But yeah, that's basically it guys. I'm really, really wanting to get this video out there for you guys to really help you guys who do not know how to make custom thumbnails by yourself. If you like the look of the thumbnails, you can follow the tutorial. If you don't like the look of it, I'm sorry, but this is how I make my thumbnails. I think they look pretty good in my opinion. If you guys like it, you know, just please comment if you want me, if you really need help or anything. But yeah. Especially, guys, thank you so much for watching. See you all in the next video. Peace out, everyone.